Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies, and we are at Solar Edge's booth here at RE Plus Las Vegas. Now, we definitely have had our time with Solar Edge, and they have definitely made some significant improvements that I felt was really valuable to showcase with you because some of the advancements that they are making that Chris here, the VP of product development, is going to go over with are game changing and really make it something that I have to go, you know what, I think I need to reconsider Solar Edge, and I think you do too. So, Chris, why don't you give us a little background on some of these changes that Solar Edge is making with not the Energy Hub, but now it's called the Home Hub Inverter and now the Home Backup Interface, because it sounds like you guys are making some big improvements. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, thanks for the time today and glad to be here. So let me start off by talking a little bit about the inverter. One of the themes that's really been important over the last couple of years is really thinking about the ease of installability of the product. We, we go out in the field, we listen to the customers, and we get their feedback on what we can do to make things easier to install. So I'll talk about that maybe for a couple minutes. Yeah. So, so the new home hub inverter, there's a, there's a few features, but from an installability perspective, we are now factory installing Wi-Fi in that. We're finding in most cases, customers want to go in the home, and we're going to install it and it's going to communicate over the Wi-Fi network. So, so that's embedded in here. They don't need to do any wiring and, and, and it's kind of pre-set up to use the home customer's Wi-Fi. But then the second thing that we've done is we have our home network protocol, which is the wireless protocol we use to communicate with all our accessories. So we have the inverter here. We've got battery. We've got a DC EV charger down there. Uh, we've got our load controllers, you know, and we'll talk about some of these things later. These all communicate with the inverter through this Google Open Thread protocol. It was specifically designed for home network. So it's not a high bandwidth protocol. You know, I say you're not going to stream high definition video over this protocol, but it is meant for resiliency. It's also a mesh network. So what that means is different devices add a different oh, mesh they node. Extending and, and, and they it. keep extended. So as oh, you add wow. more devices, you extend your range. Uh, and you actually add like fault tolerance and resilience within the system. Wow, that yeah, is yeah. really so impressive. It's a very, very interesting protocol and we think really when we get to the theme of installability, rapid installs, reliable and attractive, it, it really is uh, a game changer. For and I would imagine things. that streamlines the commissioning process. So as an installer, I've got everything connected, I'm done for the day and I'm ready to just commission and I should be able to just connect to the home hub and then it should search for all those devices yep. automatically. So let's talk about some of the advantages of having a DC coupled system like Solar yeah. Edge because you have DC to DC for battery charging. Yes. And yes. then you were just, you, we're going to talk about it, but you talked about uh, DC charging to an electric vehicle uh, that you'll be rolling out later next year. So we'll get to that. But let's talk about that round trip efficiency and how important it is sure. under the solar billing program for so many of our customers in California. Yeah. So increasingly we are finding it's just more and more becoming a DC coupled world. And, and Solar Edge is a very global company. If you look at Europe, you look at other regions of the world, it, we're just seeing that like DC coupling is, is far more prevalent and becoming like almost the de facto standard globally, I would say. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but just like off the bat, you get like up to 10% more energy by going through for DC coupling. And particularly now that we have energy storage systems. So if you think about the conversion process, if you take PV yeah. and, and your AC coupled, you convert it to AC. And then, and then you convert it back to DC to put it into the battery, and then you convert it to AC to get it out. So, right. so we call it the triple conversion penalty. You're converting three times. Now when you have a DC coupled system, you go from PV to battery. They're both DC, and you know, there is a converter in there, but these are much more yeah, efficient. Yeah, you got the optimizer so, up on the roof, but so it's more or less a pass-through. It, it, yeah, exactly, so those are much more efficient. And so the idea is if something's DC, you don't need to go to AC and then back again, because you just have all those losses. So just keep DC, you go straight to DC, and, you know, and later we'll talk more about the DC charger, but the DC charger is the same. You go directly from PV and the DC charger will go directly to the EV. It's the only charger that does that, but, that, but that's what DC coupling does. It just makes it a, a much more efficient process. So customer. that way they're getting the maximum savings from their investment with this type of solution. Exactly. Now exactly. I know you talked about oversizing <laughs> on it. I think 150% with a 10 kilowatt yep. hour energy you know, home battery would be really good. But if you have that electric vehicle and you're able to be home consistently to charge it DC to DC, I definitely see some big advantages to that. And now you guys are launching this bi-directional charger, which I think is of really good value. Um, 
Now, can we kind of talk a little bit about sure, this sure. and how this ties in, not just for our existing customers, but also for our future customers for the solar billing program, because there are electric vehicles that are certified for virtual power plant yep. delivery. Yep. And you, uh, from what I can tell, are the only manufacturer that's doing a DC coupled bi-directional charger. Yes. So, so this is a unique product on the market. Uh, no, no one else has anything quite like this. There are other DC chargers, uh, but the architecture of this one is a little bit differently. So the, the connector here, this is a CCS1 connector, which is you know, probably the most likely standard right now. Uh, there have been a lot of changes in charging standards. Yeah. So, so th this cable will probably change and you'll have a NAX option. Yeah. You know, uh, so so we'll, we'll have that out at, at the time of launch as well. But this is a, a really just a DC to DC converter. And this would work in conjunction with the, with the regular inverter of the home. And so what this enables to happen is PV can go directly through this converter and this will dispense the DC voltage that's perfect for the electric vehicle to charge the electric vehicle. So it's inverterless charging and you get about 10% improvement in efficiency just by doing that, by bypassing the, the AC ecosystem in the home and the onboard charger of the vehicle. So it's a very capable, and it, it is bi-directional. This one's 12 kW. Okay. This also does both voltage architecture. So you tend to see batteries having either a 400 volt architecture or an 800 volt architecture. And so this will dynamically reconfigure the power conversion oh, wow. on the inside. If you plug in a 400 volt vehicle, you know, there's communications in here. Yeah, and the it interface, knows it's 400 volts. It knows it'll configure for the exact voltage and same with 800 volts. So it does the, the, the full voltage range. So that means you kind of have that future protection. If you change, you get a different electric vehicle in the future, it'll work with, with kind of all electric vehicles. And what's nice with this bi-directional is you can also use it for vehicle to home backup. Yes. So, yes. and it's universal as long as the vehicle supports it. Now we yes. recently did a Ford Lightning yeah. uh, backup charger the problem with that particular product is it's exclusive to the Ford Lightning. Yes, now yes. Ford is going to open it up to other Ford lines, but you're basically sticking it to just one manufacturer. Yeah. And people don't really stick with the same manufacturer year over year um, for their entire life. So you usually yeah. do bounce around between different manufacturers. So having a universal charger, I think is of great value, especially for that home backup scenario. Increasingly, what we're seeing customers ask for is a complete energy management system. Right. So what, what we're, and, and we can talk about it, uh, we'll go back to the inverter, but with our system now, we see what the PV production is, oh we see what the home is using in the interface with the grid, because there's monitoring on the grid side. We know the state of charge of the battery, we know the state of charge of the vehicle. So when you have full visibility to all of the energy systems in the home, then you can make decisions that are optimum for the home. So you may, you may do load shifting, you know, have something do, you know, charge at a different time, you may turn off loads. And so I think we're increasingly evolving to solutions where you don't have a discrete solution like a battery from one vendor and a PV solution from another vendor and load control from another vendor because you really need one ecosystem and one common monitoring platform to, to make those decisions. So how the whole system comes together is you got your solar module connected to the power optimizer, that DC power is coming down into the inverter. It's almost one for one. We should be around 99% efficiency at that yeah, transition. Is it, is it 99%? It's getting into there. It comes into the battery at what, like 96, 98%? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so round, round trip of this is in the 96s. Yep. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, you're going back out yep. to the house to power now, from it. All of this being on the DC side, being DC coupled, we can do all of these things without requiring a main panel upgrade. So increasingly what you have is the home is becoming electrified. Right. As the home becomes electrified, you may need to do a main panel upgrade. Those are thousands of dollars. Like a main panel upgrade costs more than buying an inverter or a charger. A lot of the it, times it does. And, and what we hear from installers is there's a huge delay on doing that. Um, in, in terms of, because you've got to work with the utility. You've got to work with the utility. The yeah, it's an ordeal. We hear routinely that if the project requires a main panel upgrade, the likelihood of closing the project at all just uh, falls off quite a bit. And it's the same on electric vehicles. If you have an $800 electric vehicle charger and it triggers a main panel upgrade, the $800 charger suddenly became like a $5,800. A $6,000. And that makes yeah. someone say, oh, maybe yeah. I won't get an electric vehicle. Yeah. And so having, avoiding that main panel upgrade, so that the battery, it doesn't go on the AC load center. The charger doesn't go on the AC load center. And, and you have your inverter, and it just takes up that one spot in the load center. 
And so, so now you have all these things. So you can add batteries, you can add PV, you can add EV storage, and it only takes up one breaker position. And then you're talking about the power control system yep. that's integrated within it to throttle it so you don't have to and, do and, the electrical and that, upgrade. And that's the next step. So yeah. one of the new features on this here is, is what we call PCS, so power control system for electric bus bars. So what we're doing is we, we have these little CTs here, and as you can see, they're pretty small, pretty thin. Yes. E easy to add on to a load center. You know, this is a nice spacious load center, but even on tight load centers, these fit in very tightly. No, those are really compact compared it's, to a lot of CTs we, on the market. Very good feedback on those. Yeah. So now the inverter, right, it's, it sees what's being produced, and it sees what's going on in the load center, and you can put a big inverter on a small load center. So normally a 100 amp load center is a 3.8 kW inverter, which particularly with an electrified home, that's not big enough. So now you can put a larger inverter and the inverter with the PCS system, it sees what's being drawn here, and it sees the inverter, and it makes sure that this is run without, without exceeding the limits of the bus bar. And so, so that's very powerful there. And now the other thing that we've done with PCS is, you know, you do see PCS in the market. We've created embedded PCS. And so what I mean by that is, so this little white block here, this is an ANSI C12 0.5% accurate revenue grade meter. Wow. So this is a discrete meter. We're the only inverter company that does that. So you get 0.5 revenue grade meter. It's built in. So that's why we say there's PCS and there's embedded PCS. So it's embedded in the inverter. So when it comes time to do installation, you don't have to install a meter on the wall and, and run power to the meter and run communications to the meter. It's already installed. You just take these here, clip them on, and you're done. Because as homes become more electrified, it's going to be harder to fit it in. And so that's why, that's why if you have PCS and you have a DC coupled system, you know, none of these things even go into the load center. The only thing that goes to the load center is the inverter. Yeah, that and, one and, connection. And this, and this is now a smart load center. You kind of take a, a dumb load center and you create a smart load center. And so it's, it's very powerful. You can fully electrify the home and you don't have to worry about doing that main panel upgrade. So very valuable. It just makes the accessibility of solar uh, you know, far broader in terms of the market. And it keeps the cost in a, in a place that allows people to have a reasonable return on their investment. Yeah, and the interesting things that we learned is in the U.S., we've really been lucky at how low our electricity rates are. Yeah. And I know people in California may think that's a crazy statement, but in Europe, they actually have it a lot worse. So these algorithms that we're now using in California because of NEM3 actually started in Europe because the Europeans have been facing very high electricity prices particularly with issues with the Ukraine for over a year now. And so we took these algorithms and, you know, SCE and, you know, PG&E, they have different rates, but you run the same algorithm with a different utility rate model in it. And so we we're able to take that technology, being a global company, we took that technology and brought that over to the U.S. And, and the other thing that we saw, in the U.S., we always thought of storage for backup. Right. In Europe, they tend to think, of storage for economics. Yeah, for just self-consumption. And, and then California changed all that. So our solution in California is you actually just get grid-tied storage, or your option, you just get the inverter with the battery, you don't get backup, it's cheaper to install, um, and you get the economics. So, so now you can think about, is my storage, is it for backup, or is it for economics? If it's for economics, you get the, uh, the what we call the rate saver solution. Right. You get all the sophisticated algorithms that are going to run the dispatch models, and you, and you don't have the backup. So it well, takes and you can always system. add this later on. I think it would be awesome for us to do things like that, you know, because now I can even reduce my overall investment even further because I have an electric vehicle. If it's supported bi-directional charging, I could have my home hub, use the bi-directional charger, and then use my vehicle to curtail my evening usage and still maximize my savings even more so than having to even buy the, the battery. And, but it just depends. Everybody's situation is going to be different and, and what ends up coming about uh, from legislation will vary as well. Well, I appreciate the time and going over everything with us, Chris. I really think Solar Edge has something unique here that the rest of the industry isn't considering, or if they are, they're not going to be implementing it in the same manner that you guys have been doing with the DC architecture that you have years of experience behind. I really feel that what is going on and what's coming in the future is something that definitely interests me and my customers as well as I think other installers. Great. So I hope to be offering this here real soon to our customers so they can request a quote by using the link down in the description below. And if you're an installer that's out of our area or you want to be offering Solar Edge, you should reach out. We're going to have a link from Solar Edge as well so that way you can become a certified installer with them and start offering your customers a fully DC coupled solution with bi-directional charging because 
The future is now, and SolarEdge has it.